back to Duran ASEAN, you're with Gauri and Arlene. So uh, f every Friday from uh, now on, we're going to have this uh, new segment called ABC Cult, where we actually uh, do a little play reading. We uh, pick a particular play and we uh, discuss about it. Uh, of course, we read the play first. We do like a, a, a role play uh, uh, where we will actually read the play and then uh, ask questions about it and uh, analyze it. And the play that we have chosen for today is uh, Miss Julie. And Miss Julie is actually a Swedish play by August Strindberg. And uh, it was uh, mainly about uh, women emancipation. And there are a lot of other issues that that was broached by the uh, author in this play. And uh, it's a very uh, widely performed play and its central character is uh, actually uh, this woman who is Miss Julie. And she is uh, of, uh, uh, from the higher class, from the uh, aristocrat. And she is, uh, she actually, Miss Julie, who is an aristocrat, falls in love with her servant. And she, uh, they kind of go through a little uh, issue together. And we're going to uh, read this now. And uh, there are two main characters for this scene. And one is John, and one is uh, Julie. So, uh, which one do you want to be, Arlene? Uh, well, uh, for me, do you me, want to be the guy or the girl? I want to be the girl. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay all right. Uh, I will, I will do uh, John, and uh, you can read uh, Miss Julie's part, and then uh, later, I guess we'll um, uh, analyze the scene and also ask some some questions mm -hmm. about it. So, um, we're gonna start now. No, Miss Julie, the fox don't love you. Uh, sorry, by the way, this is Miss Julie, scene number 20. Uh, no, Miss Julie, the fox don't love you. They eat your bread, but they make fun of you behind your back. You take it from me. Listen, just listen to what they're singing. No, actually, you, you better not listen. What are they singing? Some, it's some really nasty lines about you and me. Oh, what sneaks they are. Horrible. The riffraff is always cowardly, and in the fight, it's best to fly. Fly? But where to? We can't go out. And we can't go up to Christine's room either. Then come into my room. Necessity knows no law, and you can rely on my being real, sincere, your respectful friend. But just think, would they look for you there? I will bolt the door, and if they try to break in, I will shoot. Come, come with me. Promise me? On my oath. There, do you see? You've seen it for yourself now. Do you think that it's possible to go on staying here? No, I don't anymore. But who's to blame? Who's to be done? Sorry. Run away. We can travel. We can, we can go far away from here. Travel? Yes, but where? To Sweden, the Italian lakes. You've never been there, have you? No, is, is it nice? Oh, it's a perpetual summer of oranges, laurels, oh. What, what are we to start doing afterwards? We can start a first-class hotel there with first-class visitors. And hotel? That's life, to be sure. Take it from me. An endless succession of new sights, new languages, not a minute to spare for sulking or brooding. No, looking for work, for the work comes on its own. The bell goes on ringing day and night, the train puffs, the omnibus comes and goes, while the gold pieces roll into the till. That's yeah. a life. Yes, th th that's what you call life. But, but what about me? The mistress of the house, the ornament of the firm, with your appearance and your manners, oh, success is certain. You know, you can sit like a queen in the counting house, you set all your slaves in motion with a single touch of your electric bell, and the visitors pass in, your, uh, in possession by your throne, lay their treasure respectfully on your table. You've got no idea how men tremble when they take a bill up in their hand. I'll touch up the bills. You must sugar them with your sweetest laugh. Uh, let's get away from here. That, 
that's all sounds very nice. But John, you must give me courage, dear. Tell me that you love me. Dear, come and take me in your arms. I should like to, but I I dare not. Not not here in this house. I, I love you, no doubt about it, but I mean can you even have any real doubt about it, Miss Julie? Miss? Say dear. There are no any barriers between us. Say dear. I cannot. There are still barriers between us as long as we are in this house. Okay, your your father is the count, who is my master. And I've never met a man I respected so much. I've, I've only got to see his gloves lying there on a chair and straight away I feel so small. And I only hear the bell and I dash like a startled horse and I've only got to see his boots standing there so so proud and upright and I've got this pain inside. You know, superstition, prejudice which have been inculcated into us since our childhood but which one can't get rid of but only come to another country, to to a, a republic, and I'll make people get on their knees and uh, before my my porter's livery on the... Uh, do you hear? You'll see, but not me. I'm not made to go on my knee, for I've got grit in me, I've got character, and for once I get onto the first branch, you, you'll see me climb right up. Today I'm a servant, but next year I shall be the proprietor of a hotel, and in 10 years I shall be independent, then I'll take my trip to Romania and get myself decorated and maybe on that note I will finish up as a count. Good. Good. Oh yes, uh, the title of a count is to be bought in Romania and then you can be my countess. Tell me that you love me, dear. If you don't, why? Why I? Why am I if you don't? I will tell you a thousand times but later on. Not here. Above all, no sentimentalism if everything isn't to go smash. We must look at this matter quietly like sensible people. You sit there and I will sit here and we will just pretend as though nothing happened. Oh my god, have you no feeling then? Me? There's no man who has more feeling than I have, but I can control myself. A short time back, you could kiss my shoe and now? Well, a little while ago, but now we've got something else to think of. Don't talk brutally to me. No, I'm just talking sense. We've made fools of ourselves once. Let's not do it again. The Count may turn up any time, and we need to map out our lives in advance. What do you think of my plans for our future? Do you agree? They seem quite nice. But one question you need large capital for so great. An undertaking, have you got it? Uh, have I got it? Of course I have. I have my special knowledge, my uh, exceptional experience, my knowledge of languages. That's a capital which is worth something, seems to me. But we can't buy a single railway ticket with all that. That's true, so I'll look for somebody who can put up the money. Where can you find a man like that, all at once? Then you will have to find him, if you are going to be my companion. I can do that, and I have I got nothing myself. In that case, the whole shame collapses. And? And things will just remain as they are now. Do you think I'll go on staying any longer under this roof as your mistress? Do you think I will let the people point their fingers at me? Do you think that after this, I can look my father in the face? No! Take me away from here, from all these humiliations and dishonor. Oh my god, what have I done? Oh my god! <laughs> well, so that's the game. What have you done? Just as the same as thousand other people like you. And now you despise me? I'm falling! Fall down I'm to falling. my level and I'll lift you up again afterwards. What awful power dragged me down to you. This power which draws the weak to the strong. Which draws him who falls to him who rises. Oh, was it love? Love this. Do, do you know what love is? Do you really suggest that I meant that? Don't you think I would have felt it already long ago? What praise is, to be sure, what thoughts? That's what I learned and that's what I am. But you just keep your nerve and don't play the fine lady here. We've got into a mess and we've got to get out of it. Look here, my girl. Come here. I will give you an extra glass. 
have a little bit of this wine. Where did you get the wine from? The cellar, of course. My father is a Burgundy. Is it too good for his son-in-law? I don't think. And I've been drinking beer. That only shows that you've got way more worse taste than me. Thief! Oh, you want to blab now? Oh, oh, the accomplice of a house thief! I drank too much last night and I did things in my dreams. Midsummer night, the feast of innocent joy. John, innocent, hmm? Is there, at, is there at this moment a human being as unhappy as I am? Why are you, after fi such a fine conquest, just think of Christine in here, don't you think she's got feelings as well? I used to think so before, but I don't think so anymore now. A servant's a servant. Okay, uh, I guess that's, uh, we, we read uh, from scene 20 to 25. So what happens here is uh, Julie actually sleeps with John, who is her servant, and now they don't have a choice but to run away because she thinks that this is uh, embarrassing for her and for her father and for the entire family's reputation since she's from an uh, aristocratic family. And John is um, making use of the fact that um, he's a guy and he's trying to manipulate her into taking all her money and running away with him. And but what John really wants is not really Julie or or his or her love. He just wants uh, to use all her money as a capital for him to climb up the social ladder. Well, I I'm actually uh, I felt this um, play sort of show the unequal power structure between John and Julie. What I see is Julie is seem to be so submissive to him to the extent that she can't see herself being with any, any other guy other than him while he is taking, off the, uh, taking advantage of that situation and is trying to just control her by sort of be the, the up, having the upper hand in the power structure. Uh, that is actually uh, pretty much what the play is about, uh, the struggle between different uh, uh, classes. And the ironic thing is John is actually trying to climb up the social ladder because he is not content with being a servant. But Julie is actually tired of being the aristocrat. And she wants to step down the social ladder and be one of the people, which is why she chose to uh, sleep with John. But then now John is, uh, like you said, he has the upper hand and he's using it against Julie to manipulate her into uh, leaving her family and running away with him. And I think the context of this play shows that uh, perhaps this is during the Victorian era or the era during the 18th century and such, where society is still very much divided into social norms and social roles when it comes to gender. So when it comes to the female gender, even though she comes from an aristocrat family, she still uh, has to bow down to the... Uh, to the to the whims of men, mm -hmm. uh, she is unable to make her own decision when it comes to how she should lead her life, and she's very much dependent on men when it comes to um, um, emotional support. Mm -hmm. So her mom actually uh, raised her to hate men because uh, although they were raised in that era, her mom had this idea that women should not bow down to men. So uh, her mom raised her in a very boyish manner. Actually, she thought. Her mom taught her how to uh, do farming, how to ride a horse and all this other uh, boyish manly stuff. And she actually grew up hating men. But at the same time, she has her sexual urges that she needed to, to satisfy. And she still needs a man for that. But it also seems like she, uh, it, it's, it's a typical sort of narrative where the good girl falls in love with a bad boy. And she just can, can't get over <laughs> him, it seems like. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that, that kind of plays in into the story as well. Uh, but John's uh, biggest role here is to cause uh, Miss Julie's downfall because uh, she was just another... I, w I would say she's pretty uh, naive based on, on the play. And uh, she trusts, uh, she probably trusts people too easily. And, uh, and she's also, as much as she doesn't like it, she is kind of indirectly being controlled by men, like her father, for example. She shivers in the presence of her father, and then she has uh, sexual intercourse with John, and now she doesn't have a choice but to listen to whatever John says because she's so embarrassed about herself, and she, she feels like she has disgraced her family, and the only way to get out of this is to actually run away with John. 
Yeah, and actually John is quite demeaning towards her when it comes to the way he view her. Um, I don't see that John is looking at her as in like she's an individual, but he is looking at her as as a whore. Uh, uh, and in this case, I guess uh, to put it in a much clearer context, he's seeing her as an object for him to mm. sort of like capitalize on his own sexual needs. Yeah, not only his sexual needs, but his uh, dreams of becoming a count as well, mm. because he knows that Julie has uh, all this money and she's the only way uh, for him to actually get access to uh, the capital for him to set up his business or whatever it is that he wants to do in order to become more than just a servant. He is uh, a very ambitious man and he has all these uh, dreams and this crazy ambitions, but he doesn't want to do it the right way. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. He wants to uh, cheat or oh, uh, use the, the fastest. Yeah. Oh, there, there isn't a really a right way during the era when social mm -hmm. mobility is very scarce in a way that you are either coming from a middle class. I mean, I don't think there's even a, a thing called middle class family. It's like mm -hmm. you're either from an aristocratic right. or, you know, an upper class family or you're just a peasant, you know. Just uh, you have to scheme your life just like that. Um, and you have to struggle to, to even like find food, you know, put food on the table. Mm -hmm. For him, I mean, I think he's fed up of that kind of life. That's why he's, the only way is to get Julie and just be be prominent from, I mean, just kick his ass off from there on, you know, to, to propel himself in the career. Actually, yes, you are right, because he is supposed, to, by right, he's supposed to marry the cook in the house, whose name is Christine. They had a, real, a little uh, relationship going on and Christine is actually under the impression that John is going to marry her because they are from the same, uh, from the same uh, class and uh, it only makes sense that they would end up with each other because they've also been working in the same house for a long time. And um, John also made promises that he loves her, he loves Christine, he's going to be with Christine, marry Christine. But at the same time, he's, he's torn because... Miss Julie started flirting with him and then he saw his opportunity there mm -hmm. to actually get out of this and to be something more than than just the, the valet uh, of, of the house. You know what I like about plays like this is it really reflected the real society, societal situation, um, not just in this era, but even in, in, uh, in dramas. I, I still remember, uh, I watched a lot of Filipinos dramas mm -hmm. when I was a kid and I realised that the... the, the the ongoing, uh, like underlaying team is always like a rich guy or a rich girl mm. falling in love with a poor, poor kid, a poor mm. lad. Uh, but, but at the same time, I also realize the reason why that's the the the, the popular uh, underlaying team of um, majority of Filipino dramas because the inequality in that in in Filipino is really high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the same with Malaysia if you s looked at uh, all the Mal a, a number of the Malay dramas it's either about some rich businessman uh, falling in mm -hmm. love with a typical, you know, peasant girl from camp uh, from the kampung or village. And I think uh, what you see in Miss Julie although it's a reverse role but it, it's always uh, it's always a, a love between two different social classes. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. Uh also, apart from businessmen falling in love with uh, village girls, we also have a lot of cases where uh, this, uh, this probably this group of girls who uh, mig migrate from uh, can be outskirts of town to the middle of the city and, and they find it hard to sustain themselves and then they look for all these uh, what you call sugar daddies to uh, sustain them and we see a lot of, of that in our uh, local uh, dramas as well. Mm. And... I think for Christine to to devote himself to a guy who is of a lower social status, mm -hmm. well, sorry, not Christine, Julie, it shows that Julie is beyond classes. I think she, she just wants a guy that she can fall in love with and lead a peaceful, happy life. But I don't think she made the right choice with, with John. Yeah, she's one of those, uh, I guess, people... Uh like, if you look at royal families, they always say things like, oh, I'm so tired of all these uh, royal activities, all these glamorous events that I have to attend. I just want to be a normal guy. I just want to fall in love with a normal girl and lead a normal life. And I think it's the same case with Julie here because mm. she, her whole life she's been this uh, 
a girl from this aristocrat family and she has to maintain a certain uh, a facade. Demeanor, yeah. yeah. So she has to be this demure, refined, polite girl. But uh, being humans, all of us, we have our sexual urges. We have other uh, other urges uh, as... as uh, so, some even maybe animalistic uh, in, in that sense, and uh, she she was actually um, engaged to a guy earlier, but that was just a, a small part of the play. But she wasn't happy about the fact that she was uh, that she had to be committed to someone, mm-hmm. and she wanted that guy. She was actually treating that guy like her slave, mm-hmm. and uh, of course that guy wasn't happy. And then she uh, also ended the engagement, and then for some reason she thought that John would somehow work out uh, better for her because of his uh, lower lower uh, social uh, stature. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, I, I, I feel that in today's society, we, we still have this kind of like power play between genders and power play be- between classes as well. I think uh, between genders is definitely much more obvious even though uh, we have all this uh, feminist movement and women's mm-hmm. rights uh, advocacy but at the same time I, I also realized that even though women have progressed in terms of their class their income their career they are still tied down in terms of the way the decision making the way they are able to lead their life it seems like they still depend a lot on men like I mean it's not just the social uh, structure, but also the social narrative. For example, if you go to any, uh, you buy a, any beauty magazine, mm-hmm. the, the idea of an ideal woman is a woman who can take care of herself, who has a career, but at the end of the day, she must get a husband mm-hmm. or get a boyfriend. So, I mean, they, they don't celebrate a social narrative where she doesn't probably need a boyfriend. She just needs to be happy mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because another... Uh, widely discussed issue from this play is also the emancipation of women because uh, the beginning of the play, Julie actually goes into the kitchen to uh, flirt with uh, John and uh, by right, during that time, a person of her uh, uh, her class does not even probably know where the kitchen is at home because the servants take care of everything. So even the fact that she uh, walked into the kitchen shows how she's uh, how she's probably breaking away from the social norms of, of that time and she has a mind of her own and uh, also where the, the part where uh, not only she flirts with him, she also t- asks him for a dance and they actually dance uh, in public and in front of everybody and, and everyone was staring and wondering why is this aristocratic girl dancing with her servant because that is just unheard of during that time. So I guess um, this. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, mm. my last comment is: I think for women, as much as uh, we have the ability to do whatever we want in today's society, as in like the way uh, in education, uh, economic activities, and all that. I think at the end of the day, we also need to change the social narrative itself. I think the the, the main focus for any woman should not be about seeking for a man's approval or finding the uh, the love of her life. I think mm-hmm. it should be always about how can she be happy in life and how can she spread the happiness to others. That's right. And also, I think every woman should uh, speak up if they uh, they have whatever uh, thing that, that they are not happy about or if whatever it is that they want, they should just uh, go for it, mm-hmm. uh, be brave and, and be bold and... Uh, probably take a risk in, in life and, and not be uh, s- suppressed yeah. by uh, mm-hmm. all these social norms out mm-hmm. there, all these uh, rules, uh, all this uh, perception that is created by uh, society. Don't, mm-hmm. let, don't let people impose that on mm-hmm. you. So that's all for today. Yeah, I guess that's, that's all that the time that we have. And you can always follow us on fa- Facebook and Twitter. And of course, uh, listen to us live at drenasian.com or you can download uh, your mobile's tune-in app and listen to us via your mobile. Yeah, so we'll be back in a bit to uh, for our ABC Dialogue in about uh, 15 minutes. Yep. So stay tuned to Durian ASEAN.